Cervical screening? What is that? Well, in today's episode of Dr. Nora, I'll be dispelling some common myths and answering some questions that my patients commonly ask me when they're having their cervical screening test, from what it is, how it's performed, what the results actually mean, and sharing with you some exciting new developments in this field. It's time to hear a little bit of anatomy. The cervix is found at the top of the vagina in women. It acts as the entrance for the womb, which as we know is the organ that holds children when we're pregnant. Sometimes the cervix can have abnormal cells, and those cells can sometimes change and cause cervical cancer. And this is where the cervical screening test comes into play. You've probably heard of the pap smear, whether it through your gran, your mum, a friend, or even your sister. The pap smear was one of the original ways of checking for cervical cancer. It was invented in the 1950s by a cytopathologist named Georgios Papanicolo, and it consisted of collecting cells from the cervix, placing them on a microscope and staining them to detect any abnormal cells. It was these abnormal cells that were removed in order for them to stop developing into cervical cancer. The pap test relied on abnormal cells being detected, and so the test was recommended to have every two years. Fast forward into 1983 and a German virologist named Harold Zuhlhausen actually discovered that HPV causes cervical cancer. And the first HPV test was invented 15 years later. And it's this principle which forms the basis of our new cervical screening program, whereby cells are taken from the cervix, much like the same way as the pap smear, but rather than looking for abnormal cells, it actually looks for types of HPV, which can cause the cells to change, leading into cervical cancer in the future. And we now know that HPV causes over 99% of all cervical cancers. So you can already tell that this is a much superior way of testing for cervical cancer rather than its predecessor. But Dr. Nora, what is HPV? Well, HPV, otherwise known as human papilloma virus, is a very common infection. In fact, most of us, including men, will have had this at some point in our lives, but we just don't know that we've had it because it causes no symptoms. And generally speaking, our bodies will clear it away with our own immune systems in about one to two years. In rare situations, your body may not clear it away, in which case your doctor will advise you for further management. There are lots of different types of HPV infection. In fact, the World Health Organization recognizes that there are over 100 different types, of which 14 of those are considered to be high risk that may cause cervical cancer. HPV is spread through genital skin-to-skin -skin contact, and it's thought to be the most common sexually transmitted infection. In Australia, the cervical screening test is open for anyone aged between 25 and 74 years of age every five years. It's open to women who are homosexual, heterosexual, transgender or intersex, as anyone who has genital skin-to-skin -skin contact is at risk of developing an HPV infection. The test itself is quick and it shouldn't be painful. It may, however, feel uncomfortable for you. Your practitioner will offer you a chaperone and you'll be asked to undress yourself from the waist downwards, lie on the couch with your legs apart. A piece of plastic, otherwise known as a speculum, will then be inserted into the vagina, allowing for a good view of the cervix so that a quick sample can be taken. This is then sent off to the lab, and depending on the local lab, it may take up to five to 10 days for results to come back to you. Now, I have done a lot of these, on average, over 30 a month. So I've seen and I've heard it all. Here are my top tips for getting you through your cervical screening test. First up, relax, take some deep breaths. Your pelvic floor muscles will sense when you're feeling anxious and they'll tense up and contract, making it a lot harder and more painful for the smear test to be taken. Secondly, make that trivial conversation. As awkward as it may be, you'll be surprised that by the time you finish your first sentence, the test will be over already. And that brings me on to my next point, which I think is really important. Please do not worry how it looks down there. Don't let that be the reason why it's putting you off having your spike or smear test. As practitioners, we've seen it all. And I promise you, by the time that you're out of our door, we would have forgotten about you in the nicest possible way. <laughs> so please don't worry about that whatsoever. And finally, don't put it off. I've had ladies that haven't had their smear test for over eight years, and by the time we finish, they say to me, Dr. Nora, was that it? I waited for eight years for that. Why didn't I come sooner? Ladies, it is the one test that will probably change your life, and it'll save your life if anything abnormal is detected. So please, don't let one bad experience put you off from having it done in the future. Once you finish, results can take up to five to 10 days for them to come back to you, and you'll be placed on a register to remind you every five years to go in for your cervical screening test. Depending on your doctor, you may not necessarily get a call for a normal result, but let's face it, getting a call from your doctor can be a daunting experience. So I'm gonna break down what some of the results may actually mean for you. Number one, return to screen in five years. 
it's now better understood how cervical cancer develops. Cervical cancer is rare, and we know that it can take up to 10 years for the virus that causes most precancerous abnormalities to develop into cervical cancer. A lot of research has been done in this field, and we know that you can safely be rescreened every five years, moving away from that traditional two yearly screen that we used to have. In fact, Australia is one of the first countries to implement the new HPV screening test every five years, with the UK soon to follow. Number two, repeat the test in 12 months. If you receive these results, you don't necessarily need to have any further investigations. You'll need to have a repeat test in 12 months' time. This is because you have an HPV infection that will be naturally cleared away from your body in 12 months. A repeat test will check that the HPV infection has gone and you can return to five yearly screening. If you still have a HPV infection at this repeat test, your doctor may then advise you to have further investigations. It's important to remember, however, that this does not mean that you've developed cervical cancer. Remember, cervical cancer can take up to 10 years after a HPV infection, and that outcome is extremely rare. Number three, refer to a specialist. If you receive these results, it means that your test has detected a type of HPV infection or that you have an abnormality on your test that requires further investigation. This is usually done through a specialist known as a gynecologist who is a doctor that is practiced in the field of women's health for an extended period of time. Generally speaking, you'll be offered something called a colposcopy, which is a procedure that I'll be discussing more in detail in my next video. It's really important that you follow through with these tests. Number four, unsatisfactory test result. This doesn't mean that there's something is wrong. It could just mean that the sample was not able to be read properly, and this can be due to a number of reasons. For example, there wasn't enough cells in the sample that was taken. This will usually have to be repeated at six weeks time. The cervical screening test in Australia is offered between the ages of 25 and 74 every five years. If, however, you're outside of those age groups or you're not quite due your next cervical screening test and you have symptoms such as abnormal bleeding, which could mean bleeding in between periods, bleeding after intercourse, or even bleeding after menopause, it's vital that you seek the advice of a medical practitioner to investigate this further. And here's the great news. With the cervical screening program and the cervical vaccination program now in full swing in Australia, academics have estimated that 13 million cases of cervical cancer are likely to be prevented in the next 50 years. And if these strategies are to be implemented worldwide, then by the turn of the century, the incidence of cervical cancer could be so low that it could effectively be called eliminated. So girls, it's time to unite together and fight cervical cancer. If you're overdue or you've not had your cervical screening test, please book it in today. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for my next video. But for now, take care and stay healthy.